Welcome back, everybody, to the adventures of the Martin Dynasty, now possessors of the Iron Throne. Though I am excited to have the Iron Throne in the Dynasty, I wasn't quite clear yesterday, because in the words of Jon Snow, I don't want it. Because it's going to be a massive pain in the ass actually taking control of the Iron Throne. Bear in mind that the ultimate goal for the series was to put a Martin on the throne of every dynasty. Sure, we can do what the Baratheons did and wait for them to go into rebellion, revoke it righteously, dish it out to another member of our dynasty. But that's almost like too easy. Particularly when inciting revolts is something we the player can obviously do a lot more effectively than the AI ever could. It's almost... Taking the Iron Throne, it's just a case of letting some time pass, firing a bunch of plots, crushing them decisively, and then moving on. I actually prefer to be the much smaller Lord, where things are a little less stable, where things are a little more uncertain. We don't know whether or not we're still going to succeed, and I think it'd be a lot cooler to put members of our dynasty on the other Seven Kingdom thrones, if that makes sense, uh, as, as, as an equivalent here. I think that's a much better challenge, so that's still what we're going to go for. If we get the Iron Throne, I'd love to find a way to dish it out to someone else, but unfortunately there's no real way to do it short of becoming elective and then electing a Martin Dynasty member who we are not going to end up playing as. That would be kind of cool. But anyway, we'll um, we'll cross that hurdle when we get there. For the time being then, Lady Elena of the Iron Throne is married to Jeremy Strong, our son. I might actually end up breaking that betrothal. Only because... Obviously, he's our heir, and then his heir will be our heir, who's also going to be heir to the Iron Throne. I might break the betrothal with him and see if we can assign her another betrothal with a different member of our dynasty that isn't directly in our succession line. Um, so let's see what we can let's see what we can find here. Any of the Martin dynasty members is fine. Roland, courtier of the Crown, he'll do. Uh, matrilineal, no. Prestige effects, but decides better not. Now she's not up for it. Uh, what about him? So she she's okay with marrying one of my character's sons. Um, but not a distant dynasty member. Oh, because it would guarantee a non-aggression pact with us, and we're one of the most powerful vassals in the Iron Throne right now. Of course, that makes a lot of sense. Let's marry off to the youngest, then. Let's marry off to Robert, because that means that we would have to lose both of our kids, and our firstborn kid would have to have no kids of his own, and our secondborn kids would have to have no kids of his own, in order for us to end up lumbered with the Iron Throne. I know it sounds like a weird thing to say, given that's kind of the entire point of um, Westerosi politics, but again, I think it would be a lot cooler to... Uh, to have it in our dynasty, and we... Sorry? <laughs> what? Uh... Oh, we've got a claim on the Iron Throne now. Why? Because our dynasty has sat on it, I guess. I have no idea. Does that mean all the Brathians instantly got a claim on it as well? I mean, obviously Stannis and Renly fought over it, but that was for different reasons. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Well, that's kind of cool either way. It's a nice backup plan if we do end up with our weird dynasty plan that we've got going on right now. If we do end up losing it, it means we can basically get it back fairly safely. What's going on there? Oh, those are our retinues, right? So I thought they were boats docked in King's Landing then. There we go. King Mathar Martin died frothing at the mouth at the 14th second moon, 8521 at the age of 15. He was a man and was unyielding in his devotion to their vows. I fucking love it when it says that. King Mathar, our cousin. Died of rabies, and again, one of the most common rays. In fact, one of the only rays I can think of uh, in the Game of Thrones to actually catch rabies is from uh, dark magic being thrown at your dynasty members. So somebody somewhere probably cursed him. Uh, maybe assassins from the Bank of Bravos. I don't know if they have access to dark magics like that. The realm is in a state of war. What is going on here? After a series of meetings, Queen Alana's councillors has agreed to wage war on the Kingdom of the North. That what? The Kingdom of the North were independent. Oh, interesting. Defending against Lord Yorba the Determined in the Veilma War. Oh, wow, they were independent. So she's going to take that back. Right, because they're an Empire-level title as well. But it does say they're a rebel leader. Um, oh, you know, that could be past tense. It's just, I, I believe they keep that regardless of whether or not they win or lose. So I assume he rebelled against the throne, won it, kept the Kingdom of the North, which is obviously now an Empire-level title, and now we're going back to it. Yeah, let's do it. Um... Crown's not split from the Iron Throne, leaving its levies directly at the disposal of Queen Olena. Yes, absolutely. Oh, we get the option in the Mega War. I had no idea. Uh, this plan is sound. I agree. So we can say to defend my liege my duty, at which point we're able to join as an ally, as we've seen previously. And, and we become independent, but we can defend her forces. To be honest, bearing in mind we grabbed the Iron Throne because everything splintered and joined her as an ally. We were able to move in and grab it because she had few troops. That's a good reason to go for this. But of course, the, the, to... Take the other one where we join as an ally would allow us full control over our troops. That might be a better plan. Um, 
How many troops have we got? 40,000. She's still got 80,000. I'm going to say I dedicate all my forces. Let her control our troops like a regular feudal society would. That way we don't have to really fuck around with it so much. We can leave her to go along and fight her wars. And we can keep her own thing. Yeah, of course. I will uh, agree to dedicate all my stuff. She just doesn't ask us again. And we'll keep our retinue at our disposal as well. I mean, we could still go in, I assume, and, and crack them around... Because we've got a retinue at our disposal. What is our character? Did you like to go on a tour? Oh, we did go on a tour with this guy, didn't we? But of course it bugged out. I'm not going to risk it again then, especially given how expensive the last one was. It is peace. You decide to disguise yourself to go out when you stroll through. It's not peace. It's literally not peace at all. Um, I guess it's maybe because we are not directly at war. I guess if it's a war targeting you. Or maybe you're an aggressor. Anyway. Um... I'll look for a quiet place to find some rest. What do we not have? We don't have the Iron Stomach still, so I guess we'll go for that one, because that can obviously also give us Brave. I'll go ahead. These voices sound foreign. Oh, we got the Alchemist this time. Um, we already have the Crazy Alchemist lab in the capital, though, don't we? Uh, crazy. Yeah, we already do. I want to look at your wares. We can buy Blue Wine, Melisandre's Ruby. Now, as I record to wear that, you have to, ha you have to be a Warlock. Um, oh, sorry, not a Warlock, a Mystic. There, there is um, it's kind of an equivalent tra trait in the form of Shadowbinders, but... Uh, this movie looks interesting. Sure, 250 gold. Why not? My lord, we've heard reports from Yunker that your bastard sister don't care. Uh, what do we... What, can we wear that? Now, what I am going to suggest then, if... Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, you have to be a fucking red priest. What a waste. Oh, that's annoying. Um, I was going to say, what we should in do instead then is go for the... Uh, why don't we go down either theology or scholarship, try and get something that will allow us to join a society. Because we haven't joined a society in a while, and the Alchemist Guild, now we've got a bit more money, we'd be able to elevate ourselves through the ranks very quickly to the extent that we can learn magic. Plus, we're playing as a decently young character for, for our dynasty too. Let's do it. That way we can also maybe start stacking up on um, on the Shade of Evening, the blue wine drank by the Warlocks of Karth, and Chris are learning even higher. We can start min-maxing a little bit more now, especially that we've kind of guaranteed our dynasty's position in the round. I'm more than happy to take a bit more of a backseat with this guy. I still want to get a the Targaryen bloodline into our dynasty. That's obviously the whole reason we married that other girl in the first place. So when we go back to her... Um, wow, so I guess gives her a bit more of a legitimate claim on the Iron Throne as well. Let's go to Descendants of this Bloodline. So there's an eight-year-old, a Maya, Maya Kindling, a distant relative, apparently, because obviously the last of the Targaryens exist because of our dynasty. The, the Targaryen bloodline, all of them descend from George R. R. Martin. Uh, oh, in that case, no, Viserys' kids died out, didn't they? Anyway, let's arrange a patrol between her and Jeremy Strong. Get that bloodline back. Um, definitely do not marry Madrilineal, you moron. And let's go ahead and give her a decent education, so we might as well give her the best... Tutora in... What do you think? I mean, Charitable would be a nice combination. Actually, this person's got some really good traits. Sure. Jamila, Lady, Lady of Tomodon can educate you. That way, if we give a good stewardship, obviously that'll add to our, uh, our, our other ruler. Oh, man. Look at this kid. Holy shit. He started out so badly. Affectionate is garbage. Fussy is not necessarily so good for a martial character. He picked up Curious, which can potentially become... I mean, shrewd, cynical, fashionable, diligent... All of those are good traits. Obviously, Shrewd being the best one there. Rowdy and Willful are what you need for a martial education. I think I might flip this kid into a martial supreme. Especially, bear in mind... Oh, God, she's been blinded. Especially given that he's got strong as well. He's got that sort of inherent boost to it. Now we got a 50 gold. We can build our observatory too. Maybe become a mystic this time. I think last time we came in astronomy, didn't we? But a mystic might lend ourselves a little bit better to that. What have you got for me? Compose a book. Oh! Oh, of course. Yeah, compose an actual base game book instead of... Um... No, thank you. Instead of all the other things. It's weird that they lot that behind scholarship. You think that would maybe be something more to do with the Citadel? Obviously, you can write the Magnum Opuses there. Maybe you can do it with the Citadel. I think we were, well, as when we were part of the Citadel, we always had the scholarship focus. So I wouldn't have been able to tell that part anyway. Um, managing a realm. Can we not manage a realm? Oh, bollocks. Complexity of war. Intricacies of relationships. Something on the gods or our family history. I mean, our family history would make a lot of sense at this stage. What books have we got then that we potentially want to... Codex Martin. So we have written a book previously. Brandon Krakenslayer wrote that one. Um, the Archives of the Wanderers is really good. Scholarly Masterpiece. Oh, that was our magnum opus, right? Got it. We've got the Book of Lost Books. It just gives plus one learning. Not to interest that one. And we've got the World of Ice and Fire. Gives another plus one learning. So, realistically, we could drop either of these more than comfortably. I think I will go for War. Bear in mind, our next character, we want to be a Warfare character. We've already got a decent Warfare book. Let's push it forward. I'd love to write another magnum opus with this guy, but I think the... Uh, the Alchemist Guild has a bit more potential. What's our... Is he a formidable fighter? Have we got any formidable fighters? Because I'd love to train our... Bear in mind, our air again is... Oh, we actually do. Shit. Nice. Oh, well, this is the Bravosi Bladesmaster that we employed to train one of our kids. Sure. Uh, let's go ahead and have him train children then. So 37.55% chance yearly. We can also force train them. Don't forget, we're a level 3 formidable fighter. Um, force to train. 
Uh, and his training is evidently paying off. Nice. That always seems to backfire for me, but this time we got quite lucky. My god, he just became brooding as well. Fucking, honestly, rich childhood sometimes can be a real double-edged sword, but this time around it's kind of paying off. As far as I recall, Affectionate works against a martial education, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously, Poor Fighter is a great start. I need to make sure I'm doing that. Can I take him on as a squire? Um, we're a knight, right? We are. Maybe they have to be, they have to be 12 or something like that. Okay, well, I'll check when we actually, um, God, God, this money is disappearing so fast. We'll check then when we are uh, actually given the option of the education. That would be another way just to get him a little bit of free extra martial. I have high hopes for Jeremy Strong. Uh, oh my god, because we're a regent. We could grant... So grant self allegiance titles. What she picked up? She picked up Volmark? Where is Volmark? It's like a random province in the Iron Islands. We could just take it and give it to a vassal. It's minus 10 opinion with um, everybody because of suspected corruption. But at the end of the day, it is a free title, so why the fuck not? Okay, um, and then we'll just dish that out to a vassal that can hold it as our vassal. Take it out of the throne. That's so strange, I love it. Okay, uh, have we got anyone in our dynasty that could do some land? Actually, I should also marry off some dynasty members too. Here you are. Albert Martin. You, my friend, the Lordship of Walmart. Wait, oh, we just can't give Roswell to a capital. I was going to say we can't land him. I thought maybe he was widowed or something. Right, let's also see very quickly if we've got any unmarried members of our dynasty. And I'll quickly tidy that up. Oh, man. Yeah, I've been neglecting my duties a little bit here as the uh, as the head of the family. I'll go ahead and invite these boys to court and see if we can uh, see if we can give them a marriage. Uh, Celeste, Lady of the Crownlands, is not in our court either. She's at the wall. That's so annoying when they do that. Uh, let's go matrilineal marriage then, because obviously she is a mighty Martin dynasty member. Um, what about my good man? No, prestige effects. Once better non-aggression pets. This one, Stone Dawner. She's highborn. Nothing. Um, House pa panis Panicillin. Nothing. I don't think we're going to be able to pull this off, are we? Oh, man. Can I invite it to court? What if we buy a favor? I want to get our family members sort of tidied up a little bit more. Uh, buy favor? 250 fucking gold. I guess because her, her dynasty are obviously on the Iron Throne. Oh, she's also old gods there as well. High gods, the gods. Um, that's a bit annoying, isn't it? Okay. Well, the only ones to uh, marry off are also like... Oh, wait, there's 14 though, isn't it? Right, I'll go ahead and marry some of these kids off as well, if possible. I'm going to... Limit it in the future to search my own realm instead, because I didn't realize... Or From where we sent George up to the wall, ever since then, we've always had a Martin on the wall. It's so weird. I, I don't know what the hell is... Uh, I don't know what's cause that, because he didn't have any kids up there. I guess where we sent multiple members of our dynasty there instead. Hello. Right, let's arrange marriage with you then. Um, who have we got? Arwen, Courtier in the Crown House. She'll do. Anybody is fine. I'm not going to bother about going and digging up... Uh, People with good congenital traits or anything like that. Not for such distant family members where we're basically never going to have to worry about them again. Oh, man. Look what we can get for this guy, though. A Martel. Oh, that'll do. Holy shit. You're welcome. Um, right. What else we got kicking around here, then? So, any of the 14 rods we can also marry off. Um, no range marriage button. Oh, he's in our realm, but he's not actually in our court. Ah, fair enough. That could be a lot more difficult, then. Um, if I should just search my court instead. There we go. Um, Roland, let's see if I can arrange some good marriages here. I'm looking for good characters. Oh, there we go. She's strong. That would do. Boom. Um, but mainly stats as well. Um, particularly for our own daughters, just in case they end up somehow gaining some land somewhere. But I might go for inheritable traits rather than that. Keep around like good breeding stock, for example. Um, so I've married off one to a strong character. Uh, there's another strong character there. She's nine years older than him, but that will do. That's okay. It's not, it's not that bad. Um... Shit. My lord's a high-ranking member of House Martel. Ah, oh, she won't marry him. Bollocks. Okay. Um, yep. There we go. Okay, let's try a different marriage instead then. Um, what about her? I mean, she's quick. She, I was going to go for her anyway. She's also a bastard, so they're probably not going to kick off like they did with the with the other marriage. There we go. Okay. And we got good breeding stock there, so that's not too terrible. Oh, we got some guard dogs out of it. I was kind of worried we wasted that 50 gold then. We spent so much gold recently. Hire the Bravossi swordsman. Uh, obviously building the observatory, doing the guard dogs as well. It's cost us a fucking fortune here. You spent many nights looking at the stars in your observatory. It's truly fascinating. Um, so we've done this one. Let's go for, is there something strange out there instead? I don't remember if there's an Necronomicon in the Game of Thrones. What is there? Um, no, she's doing a fine job. I'm going to I'm gonna always probably vote against that because the only thing it can do is make us enemies, right? By agreeing not to fire someone from the council. Uh, there's there's no downside to it, but I don't want to piss people off for, for voting to kick them out. They're the Castle Castle Belgrave. Sure, I'll take Castle Belgrave. Where's that? Was that in Rosby? Oh, I'm not going to lose it. That actually was in Rosby. Yeah, you know what? That's mine. I, I feel like I, I deserve that. That was our de jour capital's castle. That one is more than acceptable. Well, now my brother Stephen King is asking me for it. 
Uh, sh should we just give it to Stephen King then? Otherwise, he'll ask for King's Landing instead. So no, there you go, Stephen King. You can have that. That's 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 all right by me. That way, it's obviously staying part of our dynasty. Worst case scenario, it goes to Stephen King's children, and then eventually we could just revoke it anyway. But that's all right. Bodyguard, some Morris Martin, down who inherited genuinely like three hundred gold there. Good God. Um. I guess because he was a bodyguard all his life, and he obviously hasn't got much to spend the money on. Chances are he probably inherited money from, like, Julian the Wise, or apparently even then, like, Luther the Black as well would have had some gold to dish out. Um, small private funeral. Thank you for the gold. I'm going to hang on to it now. What do we want to do with that, then? Um, obviously, we'll need to pay for the Necronomicon. That's 250, so I'll keep 250 in our back pocket. We could donate some money to the Night's Watch. That gives us a shitload of... Uh, shitload of piety. I'd love to forge the bloodline with this guy. Maybe we should just keep launching wars. Like, the trident is still untended there. Surely we can press something on them. Wait. Oh, right. Of course, we've got a load of claims already on the trident. Well, let's do it now while they're splintered and not at war. That's a good idea. All right. Do it. And, of course, we've got a ridiculous amount of troops. Uh, the, the war with the north has just about ended anyway. So, ah, uh, here we go. Ah, uh, there's another good Easter egg. 250 gold plus. Uh, that's more than worth it. And, oh, affection doesn't work against a martial education. Oh, it's the other way around. Willful works against a diplomacy education. Got it. Um, that's fantastic. This kid is going to come out so well. Um, uh, vote to send the command. We might just keep a bit of round piece. Forced to train. Training's paying off. Nice. Now he's a rank two trained fighter. Can we take him as a steward yet? Um, still no. I don't know what we need to do for that. Maybe it's because we are... Oh my god, look at this shit. Lord Paramount of the Crownlands, Master of Lords of the Iron Throne, Paramount Knight, Warden of the South, Warden of the North, Regent of the Iron Throne, with probably the most powerful po politician in the Seven Kingdoms right now. Lord Paramount H.P. Lovecraft, unfortunately I did try and vote against this, but of course the council have, uh... <laughs> oh, we sent a letter because we're the Master of Laws. Lord Paramount H.P. Lovecraft, I write this letter to express the Regency Council's disapproval of your wars of aggression. In the name of Queen Olena Martin of the Iron Throne, we urge you make the peace and end the fighting. Signed, Lord Paramount H.P. Lovecraft Martin. I shall never... No, no Lord Paramount H.P. Lovecraft has no legal right to demand this. We are following the laws to the book here. We'll write an official letter back to ourselves on behalf of the Queen in order to decline that. And again, because of the Crown Laws, we haven't got to worry about that. Um, my Lord, I'm afraid... <laughs> We actually did send a letter to ourselves as well. That's so fucking good. My lord, I'm afraid I cannot end this war. My cause is just new. I have no right to come up and send out. Sign HP Lovecraft. That's, um, I couldn't think of anything more cursed. Oh my god, and there's HP Lovecraft as well. We're going to go get the Necronomicon. For God's sake. Oh, look at that. Oh, wait, that's our marshal, isn't it? Sorry, I thought the, the random Bravosi fighter then just happened to increase his training. But no, that is our trained marshal. He's now a, full, a skilled fighter, same level as us at the age of 12. Oh, I have real high hopes for this kid. Can we take him on as a squire yet? Got him a knighthood? He needs to be... Oh, uh, if he turns 14, we just give him a fucking knighthood anyway. And she's given us some gold? HP Lovecraft, for services which you have rendered to the Iron Throne, I hereby reward you with substantial grants and incomes. Holy shit. I said, look, I, I stand by the fact we are the most powerful politician in this realm by far. And more importantly, we've got that dragon rider under us as well that I almost forgot about. How do we want to approach this then? Let's send the uh, 20,000 stack... Uh, we'll put Ossifer, uh, obviously Joyce is the dragon rider. We'll put Roland and Simon. And then Joyce, Elwood, Boros there. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's actually two real good command configurations. I wanted her to be backed up by a slightly better commander, because bear in mind, she's, she's good with the dragon, but if anything happens to that dragon, the army's just gonna crumble if we leave just her in command. Okay, must move forward. 30 more gold down the shitter, but that's alright. We got plenty of gold thanks to, uh, a distant founding member dying horribly. News from Hayford of Drake, Great Trouble of Court. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's more of our dynasty members. What the hell is even that? Is that the same dude? It is. Humphrey Bardsham. 111 years old. He's still alive. Apparently, he's got a panda. His character has captured a pair of panda bears. <laughs> what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah, it's, it's actually the same dude, isn't it? Half undead. This is so weird. How is he still alive? I guess he's got such a long reign bonus that everybody loves him at this stage. Personal diplomacy. Oh my god, he's got 29 fucking diplomacy. Gruff diplomat, groomed, gregarious, charitable, trusting. Look at him. Holy shit, there's no wonder the people love him so much. Wow. And it, I, I genuinely think this guy is going to be here right through to the end of the campaign because nobody wants him dead because he's got such high diplomacy. That's insane. And he's evidently a good ruler. And he's got some actual pretty decent traits. So obviously, it's a very mixed bag, but a lot of those are, are very decent. All right. Um, let's send you over to uh, whatever their capital is. Obviously, I was going to say it was um, River Run, but that's not quite the case. What do you want? 
Uh, vote for me, owe me a favor. Yeah, I think uh, the, the, the Iron Throne should offer, owe us a favor. I think that's more than fair. Leave them all be. Good luck, work, my lord. Send them to the dungeon. Offer us for waters. Yeah, send them to my dungeon. Why not? We might as well take some. Uh, might as well take some hostages. We should probably also go for River Run. So let's send you that way, and we'll send you up to get the War Goal instead. Bear in mind, this is the one with the Dragon Rider on it. So I'm just gonna have them do a bit of a swap, and then as they cross through, they're also gonna kill just a shitload of vassals. Uh, sorry, a shitload of troops. Oh, Alora Tali died in our dungeon. Very cool. My nephew has been thrown in the oubliette by his captain, Wise Master Yarzak Mozo Molas. I don't know what the hell is going on. We've had so many unique characters turn up this series. The fact that we've got Martins over in, over in like Yunkai Marine area is is absolutely mind blowing to me as well. It's so weird. We've got just character character members everywhere. We've got strange undead monsters. We've got the the great. We've seen like the Baratheons going crazy with some plots. We've seen obviously um, uh, the, the Reach. What are they called again? Help me. Uh, the Tyrells. They had that crazy plot going for a while where they completely controlled the Iron Throne. Oh, we get to... Oh, we get to pick the next Kingsguard. Um, we've got Deris... De Deris? Dennis Langwood. Uh, Terence. Uh, or Oliver Chelstead. Um, they're all very similar, but this guy is obviously a knight. He's got the highest personal combat. He's, uh, he's a Kingslander, Faith of the Seven. I think he's a sensible man. Yeah, there we go. So Dennis Langwood, thank you. 16%. Uh, this is going to take a hell of a long time, but I'm going to go for River Run just because it's worth so much war score by itself. Oh, the can't see capital. That's why we lost them. Um, good God, we're still taking... I thought I was... I'll send them for a second. We're still taking attrition from this. That's absolutely mind-blowing. Oh, there we go. It's, it's equaled out now. Okay, uh, I want to just check, make sure that we've still got... Yeah, you're still training that. So make sure we've got the... Oh, we haven't got a maester. Shit. Uh, right, get him, get him back. Uh, obligate the vassal, whatever, don't really care right now Thank you very much Right, let's get him Making sure he's serving court Or, or not at all Okay It does do that sometimes, I've noticed they, they turn up and they don't quite get the title I don't know if it's something to do with being at war Uh, now nah, there we go, I think we're good now Alright, let's get you serving court So that's got 11% chance, 12% chance roughly Of giving our children other bonus stats On top of their already good fighting skill Is there anything else we can do for our son at this stage? Oh my god, he became groomed. That's so good. You wouldn't expect it with the martial character either. Um, point to King's Granite Knighthood. Needs to be an adult? Wait, no. Yeah, it just needs to be 14 by the looks of it. Okay, cool. Ah, there we are. River has been torched by a dragon. Some buffoon has built a big statue of themselves. Tear it down, 50 gold, send it to the dungeon. Very good. And then after they've finished uh, wiping out what's left of River Run, we'll head south again and go and take that bloody capital once again. How are we doing up in Seaguard? Seaguard obviously being the war girl right now. Probably should focus a little bit more on that one, I will admit. 28%. Oh, we got some gemstones. Ah, oh, I love gemstones. Um, have they got anything else that they hold personally? Uh, old, old Oak and Deddington. Uh, old Oak's all the bloody way down there. No, thank you. I think I'm fine. Who are those 13,000? Uh, oh, most of it's the Army of the Veil. Weird. I guess we'll just go ahead and siege random stuff down. we got 91 gold there to go and see the guy who's going to sell us. In theory, the Necronomicon. Any second now. Oh, Stonemason. Hey, that's pretty relevant. What have we got? Especially with this much gold as well. Um, skill Stonemason. Another minus 50, minus 50. We haven't seen a Master Stonemason in the series. It's minus 25, ma minus 25 to reiterate. That's really, really valuable. If we get one of those, I would be building absolutely everything right now. But we'll hold out a little bit longer. Um, Rhaegar Martin would like a... I'll find him somewhere nice. Why not? We might as well just agree to it and then find him the best one rather than dish it out manually. Or dish it out automatically, I should say. Um... Right, here we go. Let's find someone slightly younger. There you go. She'll do. Groomed. Lustful. That's fine. 100 gold. Okay. Uh, tells you of Archmaester Tothmir, who knew many things of the strange fears beyond and talking beings that are not human. 100 gold is actually a lot less than I thought. Um, we came with flattery because of our high diplomacy, but they will do obviously demand it again as long as this keeps going. So let's try and get this war done as soon as possible. 35%. Very nice. Dragon Rider's really putting in the work there, but the War Goal... I should swap them over. We should have the Dragon Rider sieging the War Goal, and then some random are sieging this stuff over here. Um, let's get Ossifer on the command. Let's get Simon over there as well. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. 18, 18, 17, and then 22, 19, 16 on that one. Slightly weaker flank on that one, but to make up for it, these guys have obviously got the fucking dragon, so it's more than okay. Um, 44%. Oh, they've raised some more troops. The one thing we're having trouble with right now is they've, they've got no armies for us to kill. That's where a lot of the Battle War score... Or a lot of those war schools are tied up in right now. You found a rare looking book in the public library. You realize that we find a district library at home. Lives of the Four Kings. Um, we get stole a book. If we steal a book, as far as I recall, we don't have access to this event ever again. Um, 
I'll return. I'm not th We're not going to steal a boat like some sort of petty thieving peasant. Man, this dragon rider is so good. Uh, we're getting lustful as well. We might gain lustful there. Look at that. Just watching it completely melt away under this dragon fire is so, so good. And again, it's a little less OP than having it... Um, Having it so that we can just hit there and click the button like clockwork every single time. I do like the somewhat pseudo random nature. I think it honestly would be a better design choice if the if it worked like that anyway. I know it doesn't make so much sense that it would just randomly occur, but if it, I mean the the player is so so OP with the dragon. Every time we've had a dragon, we've basically been untouchable. I like this more random system. It it takes a little bit more power away from the dragons because I I do genuinely whenever we play the Game of Thrones mod try and not actively pursue becoming a dragon rider anymore because it's just so so powerful in the hands of a player um or maybe they should just add a gamer or something like weaker dragons or something like that i, I would definitely use that every single time right there we go um so let's go ahead move through here kill those troops and take the castle again and that will hopefully be it oh god i just hired a bloody courtier then um right good shit and then was that my air progressing I didn't pay attention to the kid. I mean, obviously, they all look the same at this stage. Uh, Slothful. Ooh, that sucks. But he did get authoritative, which is obviously pretty good for a martial character. Trusting. Oh, God. He's a real mixed bag for traits right now. Got him a knighthood. There you go. <laughs> your son, Jeremy Strong, has proven himself to be a fine warrior. You have him kneel before you and proceed to tap his shoulders with your sword. Jeremy Strong of House Master, in the name of the warrior, I charge you to be brave. In the name of the father, I charge you to be just. In the name of the mother, I charge you to defend the young and innocent. In the name of the maid, I charge you to protect a woman. In the name of the seven, I charge you to be just and honorable. Rise. Sir Jeremy Strong. Lord Sir Jeremy Strong. I guess we were able to bypass it because we're a skilled fighter. As I recall, there is a way you can just give out knighthoods anyway, but if you do it and they're not like a viable or a good candidate for knighthood, you end up becoming an arbiter or something like that. Anyway, boom. What did we get then? We, we can have a swift fealty. Oh, that's the current ruler of Seaguard. Take it for myself. We might as well take it for ourselves. That one will piss off vassals, so we'll have them... That one incorporated into our realm. And that's what's left of the trident. We did a real good number on him there. Holy shit. We want to delve deeper. I mean, the only bonus to that in the Game of Thrones mod, normally you obviously get a shitload of tech points for doing it, but there are no tech points in the Game of Thrones mod. So the only benefit to this would be the potential chance of Mystic. Let's do it. Oh, of course we become a fucking lunatic. Well, never mind. We can drop our troops now because we're back inside the Iron Throne. Ah, sucks. Um, how much did we grab though? Oh, look at that. Man, we've really expanded our way out. Again, the, the, the Kingdom of the Rivers and the Hills or, or like the, um, the House Whore lands are kind of coming together, especially given that we got that chunk out of the Iron Islands. But yeah, Seaguard is a, is a very, very nice province to pick up. Obviously, it's got the six holding slots there. Um, was this... This was the one that... Oh, man, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I'm going through the wrong event chain now. Maybe it was... Uh, what's the smell I have to find out to get the food? I don't remember. Uh, and what are we doing? We're, we're betraying some characters off that I can apparently also ransom. Oh, speaking of which, we probably ransom all these characters out. 96 gold, but I assume some of those are duplicate ransom... Ransomies? Ransomers? The person who's paying the ransom, that is. Uh, so we can just go ahead and repeat that over and over. Damn, look at the gold now. We we absolutely raked it in over the course of that war. And obviously, with the Iron Throne also paying us for our, for our services as well, that was quite generous of them. And uh, we go ahead and ransom that one out. And that should be it for the time being. In, re in regards to warfare, I'm more than happy to leave it there. I would love to grab some more claims on the trident though what i will do is try and pick up as many as possible obviously harren hall being the the most valuable one there we'll see if we can tidy up what's left of it see if we can take the whole of the crown it's either that or if we leave it too long the veil will start moving in there they've already started moving in. you see they got part of the trident there um in fact they got a lot of it man they've expanded out quite far beyond what they're supposed to okay we need to be a little bit more careful that they don't cannibalize the land that obviously we're trying to cannibalize we got there first we can colonize old stones oh cool now, if we colonize old stones, we, we've done this before, as I recall. That's this one here. Um, we can find the crown of House Mud, and by doing that, it will give us a claim on the whole of the trident anyway. So we could just push the claim at that stage, if we get lucky. Um, right, cool. Let's go ahead and dish this shit out then for the time being. We'll hold on to this castle, even though it's not upgraded, just so I can, when one of our dynasty members complain at us, we can give it to them instead. Um, as we picked up here. Oh, we got Seaguard Castle, didn't we? Of course. Well, I hope one of our dynasty members complain at us soon about that so that we can dish it back out to them all right that's kind of cool oh we got an, we got second in a regional tournament wow uh although it's this guy i have high hopes what else has he picked up here and nothing else since we last checked when is he when is he born what's the what's the word for, when's it birthday that's <laughs> that's the word for it um when, when are you born son 
Sixth moon. Okay, so we've got another, obviously we've got another 11 months there. And then all of these traits were just immediately flipped. Oh my god, we've already got a claim on the Harrenhal. Bloody hell, that was fast. Dear HP Lovecraft the Enlightened, I hereby invite you to a grand feast at King's Landing. Of course we'll get to a grand feast at King's Landing, why wouldn't we? Um, Craigard the Second Stark had Baron Locke of Old Castle arrested. Good for him. Thank you for letting me know. We've arrived at King's Landing, where Queen Elena has greeted us warmly to her feast. Bread, salt, and red wine have been served as is guest right. Thank you. Um, she's thrown us in the fucking dungeon. Oswald Baratheon used his attendance in the feast to present a petition. He demanded justice for your crimes against him, which she agreed with. Uh, can we not push a favor and, and get out of here? Make my request. If she throws me in the Uber layer, I will end her. Well, at least she lets go to the feast. Uh, this is ridiculous. Ask to ransom prisoner. It's 250 fucking gold. Oh, you shit. Um, I can't believe she locked us up after everything we... Oh, to be fair, she doesn't like us at the end of the day. Um, wow, she really doesn't like us, does she? Jesus. Uh, have I released the Kingdom of the Iron Islands and other realms? She granted the independence of the Iron Islands. What is she doing? She's just tearing this realm apart. I think that's probably how the North got independent, too. Why are the Westerlands independent? Because they should be an Empire level title. Oh, they are just independent. What has she done? She's Oh, right. They've, okay, they've come back under. The Trident must be at war with the Reach, I assume. Yeah, right. That's why they're still... Okay, so she hasn't completely fucked it quite yet. And they're back going into the Trident, cannibalizing more land. Demand a try by combat. You know what? We absolutely could do that. And I think we've got a strong chance of winning it, too. We were more powerful than all of those potential King Guards, Kingsguard members. Um. Oh, you fucker. Oh, you absolute shit. Um, I can't disarm. I, oh my god, he became ambitious and justful as well. Justful? <laughs> ambitious and just as well. I can't disinherit him for that. Um, you can marry for love, I don't mind. I really do. She might end up being horribly slain. Um, but there's not much we can do about it when we're fucking locked up. There we are. What did he get then? Oh my god, he got cavalry leader and direct leader. That's incredible. He actually came out really, really well. Cavalry leader, direct leader, strong skill fighter, groomed knight. To be honest, trusting and slothful are the only bad traits he got there. Trustful isn't necessarily... Trusting... Why do I keep falling everything? Trusting isn't so bad. Slothful is obviously terrible, but doesn't take much to flip it to diligent. Um, excuse me, can we can we leave this fucking... No, she won't. Oh, God. What happens to that trial by combat? Fighting trial personally. All right, yeah, let's do that. Worst case scenario, we'll be slain and end up playing as our incredible child. Um, 100 versus Septim Perwin. That's her champion. You're going to make me kill a priest to prove how innocent I am. That's fucking... That's a great political play. Uh, my faith in the god gives me strength. Strike. He's down. Move to quickly slash across his face, taking his eye out. Holy shit. Um, do we want to prove a point and, and kill him dead? We will piss off Lord Paramount. Oh, he's an Aaron? Some distant kingsman anyway. Um, god knows how he's related, but they are. Friends? Oh, it's his friend. Right. Um, fine. We're here to prove that we're not a dishonorable murderer, and I think killing a priest is probably not the best way to prove that. We'll leave it there then for today. I think that's a pretty, a pretty decent place to leave. And fought for our freedom. We've taken back some, a, a decent chunk. Of, we, I mean, even now we're taking decent chunks out of the land. Looks as if the Iron Throne might be stabilized. All we've got to do is wait for that patrol to go through. And more importantly, our air is... Almost godly. It's a, the, the only thing marring him here really is slothful. If that would have come diligent, he would be like the ultimate martial heir. 20 martial. I'm looking forward to playing this guy. Particularly bearing in mind he'll inherit our balloon steel armor, our Dornish spear. All that other cool stuff that will give him just a few more little bonuses there. Thank you all for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. It's been very political today. You know, we've done a lot for the we've done a lot for the Iron Throne there. Thank you to the insane top tier level patrons for making the series possible in the first place. Especially during these times of weird YouTube monetization changes. Which have change the face of the, the platform thank you to chicken wang hd at moses noble s odie william green tyler kendall amethyst corona anthony gawley gwen s peyton denisar archronx 98 asana kurito and everyone else at the insane tier levels on patreon i will be resetting that list tomorrow so for those of you who have perhaps recently joined or want to shout out change your mind about your shout out name or anything like that of course feel free to get in touch and i'll make sure that's updated ready for you for next episode thank you as well goes out to under the couch i see the greats Grey, Night Rouge, Wesley C, Distorted Triangle, Boy Prince Kibo, Alex, Smirtworm, Blood for the Blood God, Socrates, Llewellyn Thomas, Layla, Mason Five Last, never announced a Patreon as well for their support and keeping the channel possible. Thank you guys. See you all tomorrow for some more of this weird political landscape we set up.